Welcome Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube channel video. You're here with your host GBHL James and this is another Monday Hobby Vlog. Taking a little look at what kind of hobby stuff I've been able to get up to this week. Uh, now you can see in front of me that actually I don't have the Sons of Ale, although I have been working on them and hopefully I'll be able to add a little bit more paint to them today. Uh, but just a little bit of a break in between, because of course when you paint the same miniatures all the time, sometimes you do need a little bit of a break. I've been trying to get ready uh, some of my models for Saga and uh, I'm just going to show you one or two of them here now. Okay, so you can see there, that's one of the Saga models. We can just cover that up, get a bit of focus. There you go. Oh, always hard to know how to do it for the camera. There he is, there he is. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just cleaning up the models. Now I have to say that there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of sort of extra... Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but all the little metal bits that you tend to get on these. Uh, this guy is holding a banner. He's pretty cool. Uh, proper sort of Saxon windsocky kind of banner, which is very cool. Uh, now, one thing I will have to do is, and I'll go through now, is you'll notice that if you look at the bottom of this guy's feet, again, if we just let him get into focus, uh, they look a little bit clumpy. And the reason for that is that these models don't actually come like that. Uh, as we have a lot of historical miniatures, if I get out another one, oh, so I've had these ready. As we have a lot of horror historical miniatures, you tend to see that they've got this metal bit at the bottom. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just going through them and I'm just clipping off the, uh, the bottoms, just like so, using a pair of these. And then what I will have to do is, because I am putting them into Games Workshop slotter bases, is I don't think being metal models that they will just sort of stay on the basis. So what I will have to do is pin them. And I know that there has been a couple of questions about sort of how to pin um, sort of horses' legs and the such like. And I'll be able to show you the process hopefully in this hobby blog. Uh, Jane and I we've got to go and see the priest uh, regarding our wedding at lunchtime today. And as we, when we do, we're going to go. And we need to pick up a couple of little crafty bits and I will be picking up some paper clips because that's what you do when you're doing some pinning. So at the moment, literally just um, just cleaning up and getting these guys ready to be put onto the bases. Uh, I will have to give them a good sort of soapy wash first to clean off any of the mold residue uh, before we put a primer on because if they've still got mold residue on then uh, the primer will not stick. And I have to say, you know, they're not particularly messy models to clean up. There's not loads and loads and loads of excess metal. There's not tons of mold lines. Pretty easy, easy work, to be honest. Um, the main bit is just clipping off these bits around the feet. That's the bit that's taking a little bit of time. And when I've just finished clipping this guy off, I shall show you uh, my progress with the Sons of Ale. Now I was going to do this as last week's hobby blog. You might notice that I didn't put a hobby blog up last week. And the reason for that is that I was at Jane's mum's mum and dad's. Now that didn't mean that I couldn't do any hobbying. I actually did a good amount of hobbying when I was there. Um, however, their internet connection was incredibly slow and that's why we had to wait so long for speak friend in question because I couldn't fully upload it until I came home. Um, you know, which was a little bit of a pain, and there would have been absolutely no chance of getting a hobby blog sort of filmed, edited, and uploaded um, at their house. Definitely not. They certainly need to sort that out. Um, and what I was doing there was I was painting a couple of things on the Sons of Ale. And of course, I am sort of batch painting them, so none of them are kind of complete yet. Um, but as I will show you now, I've just clipped off the last bit of his foot. So, what I will be doing is I'll be drilling with the pin bias into the bottom of the feet. Um, make sure that's level of course, drilling with a pimp vice into the bottom of the feet and then putting paper clip in, gluing it in, clipping it off at the bottom, drilling holes in the slot base, nowhere near the actual slots itself. Uh, so if we go like that, and that's how they will look. And I'm glad that I'm using the Games Workshop base, I do like the bases on the game, Games Workshop models. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm going to just sort of enjoy really putting together today because once they're glued together it'll make me feel like they're a little bit more complete and then we can start having a little bit of a look at Saga uh, for the last try Let's Try Tuesdays which should be good fun. I think that's quite an interesting thing about um, about the Lord of the Rings community is that uh, a lot of the guys also do historical wargaming whereas you know what you might see with other, other uh, systems 
um, you know, they would tend to go for like your 40Ks and your Warhammer, etc. Whereas people who do Lord of the Rings, a lot of them like the historical thing. Maybe that's a big sweeping generalized statement. Um, now, what I really cannot wait to do is this guy here, who I have to say is probably one of my favorite miniatures that I have ever seen. And it is, of course, Harold Godwinson. In fact, I might just, might do him next. But if you look at him as a miniature, oh, if I, he's just absolutely stunning. Uh, now, because he's a leader as well, he has to go onto a cavalry, cavalry base. And luckily, I do have some of those. Now, I know that Jamie just stuck, stuck his, um, his just straight onto the bases like that. But I didn't want them to look like they were all on their own sort of mini hills. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm looking forward to getting him, him done. Okay, so what I'll pull out now is what I was working on at Jane's mum's. Okay, so if we have a little bit of a look here, these are my sons of L, and there's been a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of progress. So as you can see, hopefully you can see, is while at Jane's mum's, I started the first highlight of the horses. So that's why they look a little bit brighter. So I've just gone over the raised areas again with the base colour after they were inked. Um, but I've also highlighted up the red. Okay, so if we bring that red even closer, hopefully we'll get into focus. So let's see what we can do here. There we go. Okay, so all I did was I started off with, I believe the colour is corn red. Uh, I believe Corn is a Warhammer and um, 40k blood god of some kind. So I started off with Corn Red as the base colour. We then inked this uh, with Known Oil. We let that go and then we painted over the more raised areas again with the Corn Red. I then mixed the 50 50 of the Corn Red with Mephiston Red, which is slightly brighter. And then I did a slight highlight with the Mephiston Red. And then finally, I actually mixed a little bit of an orange colour, which I can't I think it's Jacaro orange, if that's right, um, with the red to just give those final sort of little lifts. I don't know if you can see them there in the red. So we end up with quite a nice highlight on that red, um, which is good, which is good. So my next stage with these guys is to finish off highlighting the horses. I've done this on a few. You'll also notice that I've uh, painted, well, I hope you notice, but I've also painted the kind of barding around the horse, the armor on the horse. Um, so I've gone for sort of like a leathery color there. I'm quite keen to make sure that I've got some, quite a lot of different browns on these guys. And hopefully they're gonna look dead good when they are finished. I've um, got a couple of others here. I, I did manage to do it with them all. So we can show off, let's see if we can, we can show off a couple of them. So this is a different son of ale and hopefully you can see that the red seems to have turned out pretty good. And that's how I tend to think of things these days when we're talking about colours is, you know, how to highlight up a particular colour. Um, and I'm very, very, very happy with that red highlight. I know it's only a small part of the miniature that I'm guiding you to today. Um, but I do feel like it's turned out exactly how I would want. Let's see if we can get one with the different pose. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so this is one of the different poses. And there you go. Now on this one it looks like I've been a little bit more stark. But hopefully, you think that looks quite good. Because I was pretty chuffed with it pretty chuffed with the colour result. So, uh, while I was painting the reds, um, I decided to experiment putting my first colour back over the, the Rivendell Knights cloaks. So if I get two Rivendell Knights, so the Rivendell Knights previously were just at a base colour stage. I then inked them, uh, like this guy here, if we can get him to focus. Come on, focus, 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 focus. So that's what a Rivendell Knight cloak looks like when it is inked. There you go. And because I was doing reds anyway, I thought, well, do you know what? I'm doing reds. So let's uh, let's go back over and let's 
put the base colour back over the ink on one of these and as you can see that already looks a million times better it's already started to pop a lot more and if we look at the other side they do have wonderful cloaks these guys the one issue that I had with the models is I don't know if you can see on this one I think you probably can but can you see the split in the helmet uh, the Rivendell Knights don't go together particularly well and you should really sort of green stuff these bits but I did I was rushing to get these done for a, a tournament at Titans I believe so yeah I did make a start on a couple of the Rivendell Knights um, although Rohan is obviously the priority it was more because I was painting red um, and I had some red left over so I thought you know what let's uh, let's make a start on these guys I think I made a start on this one here as well on the cloak so what we would do now um, is I will get a 50-50 mixture of Mephiston and corn and start to go over some more of the sort of edges and raised areas ever so slightly more and then Mephiston as a very fine highlight and then maybe use that orange again because I kind of like how that's come out and it keeps a kind of warmth there it keeps a warmth whereas when you when if I start to use a sharpty bone it might make them a bit too cool and I want them to look sort of warm and aut autumnal as it were so I hope you uh, appreciate what I've been doing so far I'll, I'm going to uh, I'm going to sign off here and uh, but we might be back later if I've got any more footage for you to show you what, what progress I've made today so don't forget as always do comment like share and subscribe to support your Hobbit hobby and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter and as always guys happy strategy battle gaming Okay, Strategy Battle Gamers, I am back, I am back, and uh, I'm back to show you uh, a little bit of pinning. So, pinning. Uh, pinning, I'll show you, uh, I'll show you why I'm going to be pinning uh, some of these guys. This is an example of one of the Anglo-Saxon uh, Danes there, and you can see that because he doesn't fit into the slaughter base, the underneath there, so he has somehow been pinned into the base. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you <clears throat> exactly how we do this. Now this is a really good way of doing any kind of conversions or uh, sometimes people do this for particularly delicate parts of a model or on metal models, especially some of the big old metal models that uh, the glue itself isn't strong enough to necessarily hold the joints. So what you'll need to do your pinning is you'll need um, like some paper clip, uh, I have actually run out of paper clips, so I'm using um, a bit of, I think it's, is it 3 amp wire or something like that, anyway, it's a big, the big thick one, uh, I've only got a little bit of it left. Uh, what you will also need is one of these bad boys, now this is called a pin vise, and some of you may have heard of it before, but this is a pin vise, and this will allow you to screw into the model itself. So what we're going to do to do this, I'll start off with, let's say we start off with this guy here. There he is, that Saxon. So as you can see, um, his feet are separate from where the base is. So what we need to do first of all is we need to uh, do some drilling into the bottom of his feet. And simply, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but simply all I'm going to be doing is putting a bit of pressure. Uh, so if we go like that, let's, uh, let's zoom in. There we go. So all I'm going to be doing is, oh, 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 there we go. Uh, putting a little bit of pressure into the foot and then simply just turning which will drill in now we've got to be careful that we don't drill through the foot I'm actually trying to aim to go up into the leg a little bit and this is all you do so rather than bore you guys while I bore into the feet of this model what I'll do is I'll turn the camera off now and I'll come in when I get to the next step So with this guy, uh, I am actually just going. To, oh, whoops! Um, I am actually just going to be. If we can get that zoomed in. I am just going to be doing. Come on, focus, focus, focus. I'm just going to be doing the one foot on this guy. There we go. There he is. And uh, the reason for that is the other one. If you look, it's it's just his toe. So if I tried to drill through that, I would probably go through the other side. Um, so I will just be gluing that part of the contact there. Uh, however, uh, you might be able to see that I've gone in a fair amount and I've tried to actually get it so it goes up into the leg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this out now and I will show you the next stage.
So there we go, quite hard demonstrating this with the camera over there, uh, but as you can see I have made a nice little hole in the bottom of this foot, so now we need to go into the next step. And the next step is, uh, I have actually used a drill piece which perfectly fits what would be a paper clip, and you'll see that when I push that in, that gives me a little bit of purchase just like that, okay, so I've not actually gone as deep as I would like there, so I'll probably do a little bit more drilling. But I will, what I will be doing next is I will probably clip that about half a centimetre um, to a centimetre uh, before making sure that it actually glues in there and that will be my next step so we'll come back when I've done that so now that I've just drilled that extra little bit of hole in there the next stage is actually putting the clip itself in so if I can get my super glue sorted I will show you that now um, I don't think I can get my super glue sorted for some reason. Sort that out before we move on. There we go. Okay. So you can see here that I have clipped off just a tiny, 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 tiny little bit of the uh, paper clip, as it were. And what I need to do now is I need to have that glued in to the hole. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the hole. Oh, say a little bit, try not to overdo it. And now that's some glue in the hole, I'm just going to stick the paper clip into the hole as far in as it can go. And then once that's in, I always like to use, where are we? There we are. I always like to use a, an accelerator to try and um, make it glue straight away there we go so what we need to do now is we need to line up with where it's going to be on the base itself so if I can get the base here there we go okay so of course I don't want this to go in the slot itself it needs to be somewhere else okay so roughly line it up where you want it to be now if you're doing this on both feet then it's important that you have got a clear marker where they're going to be uh, equal from each other because this is only done in one foot and I should be okay but what you would normally do is maybe dip that into a little bit of paint and then just pop it onto part of the base there so you know exactly where it's going in and of course if you do that on both feet then you know exactly where your holes need to be. But I should just be able to get away with doing a little bit of drilling here. Uh, so I'm just going to drill a bit of a quick hole into this base, should be nice and easy. So here we go, and as you can see when I'm drilling, uh, just the way that it is, just hold it and drill right through, just like so, easy peasy. So that hole should now be perfect, or a perfect fit. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, uh, let's have a little look. Can you see the hole? Just about, there you go. That should be a perfect fit for the paper clip to go through. And there we go. So what I need to do now is I need to make sure that that's going to be secure. Okay, so you'll see that underneath the base, uh, again, if we can let that focus, Underneath the base, the pin is sticking through the hole. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to want to do now is when I've got him in position to where he wants to be, I'm just going to pull that down to a side. Doesn't matter which side really. But that's just to kind of secure it in place and it will look a little bit like that. So now I need to actually put some glue on. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that this guy is pretty well secured to the base, which is of course what we want. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to take it out of the hole, put some glue on the feet. Of course we need some glue on the feet before it goes in. And I'm also going to put some on the paper clip itself and then stick that in. Oh, whoops. It'll go in. There we go, and then hold that in position there. Now that's in a position that I kind of want it to be in, without gluing my fingers together, I'm going to use my accelerant to make the glue stick near enough instantly, which means that then, using my hobby clippers, I can pull that round into a nice position there, underneath, and when it's somewhere secure, 
I'm going to put some glue round on this side as well. And that's just to really make sure that that's not going to come out of place anytime soon. There we go. So that is how to do a little bit of pinning, guys. Okay, just some basic stuff there. You can do it with coarse ankles, you can do it with conversions. Um, but what that means is that this guy, even though he's not as part of the slaughter base, he's a little bit more solid. So he's probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So I've got to do that with the rest of these models now. And uh, we do have Jamie coming over for tea tonight, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get any more hobbying done in the next hour outside of that. Um, so for certain now, I think I will be saying make sure that you comment, like, share and subscribe. That you support your Hobbit hobby and you follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. I hope you enjoyed this hobby vlog and maybe learned something along the way. And got to see some different models uh, while I give myself a little bit of a break from the Sons of Ale. Guys, happy strategy battle game.